Hi Chef from Walling at Homestead here. This is the ricotta ganudi recipe that I make. I will share the link in the description. Thank you for watching. So I'm making a quadruple batch of the ricotta ganudi. So I have 900 grams of ricotta, four eggs, I'll list um, the recipe in the description. So it's two teaspoons of salt. Then you just use your hands to, to mix everything together. So I did leave the ricotta a bit too long in the fridge so it's not as soft as it should be. So if you can use creamy ricotta, you won't need to knead as much. So I just transferred everything to another bowl. I don't know what I was thinking, it was way too small. Um, so I just added two cups of parmesan, three cups of plain flour, and you continue mixing with your hand. So you want the dough to come off the sides of the bowl, so you want a, some somewhat clean, clean bowl at the end. Um, if the dough does is too sticky, because you're using a wet ricotta, um, just add one tablespoon of flour at a time. So I am kneading in the bowl, um, so I don't want to add any unnecessary flour because you don't um, want the dough to become too dense. So I've been making this recipe for a while. It's one of our family's favourites. So I always make big batches and freeze the rest. They do freeze really well, they just need a longer cooking time when frozen. You can add any sauce, you can pan fry them. Um, I usually serve them like with just a fresh tomato sauce. Um, pesto's nice. Make a pesto sauce. They just turn out really airy. There's just no describing the texture. They're just really like a pillowy softness. They're really, they're really nice. So you do need to have a bit of arm strength here. I could have used my mixer, um, but my dough hook on my Kenwood is broken and because it, it's, it's such an older model I can't find replacement and I do have my big commercial mixer but it's yeah it's too, it's too small a quantity for for the mixer There we go, done. So then you just cover it with cling wrap and you put it in the fridge for 20 minutes to rest. So I'm going to be dividing this in half and then just using small portions at a time. So I haven't put any flour um, where I'm going to be rolling them. I don't want to add extra flour. However, you do want to lightly dust your hands with flour so that, that the dough doesn't stick to your hands. And then you just roll them into a long, longish rope. So you can shape these into your traditional gnocchi. I just, I just cut them.
you want them to be like somewhat smallish sizes. These ones are, are probably, um, they're a bit too big. So I did um, put some flour on a section of the kitchen bench and placed placed the gnocchi that are ready on there. It's just so they don't stick to to the bench. Unfortunately, I couldn't film this live. Um, had some of my son's friends over, so I'm a bit noisy. So you continue doing this with all the dough, little piece at a time. doesn't take long at all to make these like from start to finish is about 40 minutes with the rest time and this is what I ended up with doesn't look like much but I have another tray in the freezer so we ate a decent amount my fresh tomato sauce cooking away and I'm boiling a pot of salted water. So you just have to wait till it comes to a boil. So when you put them in, um, they float to the top. So once they float to the top, you leave them for three minutes. If um, they are frozen, you have to wait at least five to six minutes before taking them out. So they have to float to the top, wait three minutes, and then remove from the water and this is how they turned out they were yummy